was standing under the counter on the starboard side of this 43-foot Alden schooner that we're building. And there's some th things I want to show you and teach you today. It's basically about smoothing out this planking that we put on, you know, in the futter curve here. Now, there is quite a curve to this area right here, and uh, I can show it to you maybe a little bit better with this batten, you know. Uh, that's how much curvature there is in that area right there, quite a bit, and it might help if I were to bend the batten in place like that and just show you that that's a lot of curve. It's not flat by any stretch of the imagination, and the other thing about it is it's twisted, there's a lot of shape to it, it's a very hard thing to plane out, and uh, actually with the strip plank and it isn't too bad because we don't have real wide planks that we have to hollow out a lot a lot of that hollowing is done just by laying the planks in place and what we're doing at this point is just hollowing the center sections out of the plank and and getting down to the glue lines the glue lines are our control lines so we don't want to plane or get past those because we want it to be nice and fair in this direction but we also want it to be nice and fair in this direction now there's numbers of different reasons why we went about this or why we're doing this because, you know, I didn't want to plank the entire boat and then just have the whole job staring me in the face here, you know, planing this thing out. And we're going to be working up in this area. It would make this area a little bit harder to, to just step in at any time we want to work on. So while we don't have a lot of staging or anything in the area or in the way, we decided to accomplish this work right here. Now, um, uh, like I say, it, uh, it's a little bit tricky to, to do and you have to have a number of tools to go about it right and there's a lot of technique involved here. And the other reason why we've done this and we wanted to do this is so that when we walk by the boat ourselves, it just looks really nice to us. You know, we don't want it, you know, with all these glue lines showing and all that. It looks a little bit crude, you know, right after you glue it up. So, you know, I think it really looks nice like this. and. Uh, you know, I think it would be a nice platform for us to experiment with sanding equipment. And uh, oddly enough, we don't even own any sanding equipment. I don't sand anything usually, but this is all done and smoothed out with planes and scrapers to this point. And uh, we don't really have to get it any better than this. We're going to plank over it. We're just going to line off uh, Carvel planking on top of this strip planking, and we're going to plank over it. So basically, we're just going to draw lines on it. I wanted it smooth enough so that when we draw lines, they come out real nice. And uh, you know, it's uh, on the top sides as we go around the top sides. There's all kinds of different things that we have to do to the shape of it to apply the Carvel planking over it. We're actually going to flatten it between line off lines, uh, to flatten the strip planking between the line off lines for the Carvel planking, but. Right now, all I'm concerned with is showing you how to go about planing this out, or smoothing this out, having it come out like this with hand equipment. That's all done by hand equipment. It's nice and smooth. I'm feeling it with the back of my hand. There's ways to feel it. Like if you, uh, this is the easiest way really to feel it with the back of your hand because you, otherwise you have to twist your arm up and it really kind of limits, you know, the feeling in your hands and kind of get your nerves all twisted up like that. It doesn't work well. Or we'll stretch your hand out in this manner. But a lot of times I want to feel right in front of me where I'm working. I don't want to feel over here and I don't want to move over there. So I'm working here. I feel it with the back of my hand like so. And that really tells the story. And if I find any lumps or bumps or anything like that, I can go into that and take care of it. But the next thing I want to do is just show you some of the equipment I'm using here. I actually start off with these type of planes right here. Now I just call these block planes. I don't know what they're actually called, but uh, I can show you how to adjust them and different things like that. And I'll do all of that possibly in some other videos. I've got this one adjusted the way I want it right now. Here's another one. This one's a little bit different. This one is curved across. It's got a little radius across. It's also got a radius from front to back. So it fits in areas very, very nicely. Now. Then I've got these planes here. These we used to call transitional planes, and I really don't know exactly what they were called, but uh, they resemble a number five. Today we call them cordless. You know, they're cordless planes. So we've got five or six cordless planes here. I've got some electric planes. This is an electric plane that I actually curved the bottom. I made a radius in the bottom just with a 
big giant belt sander because this is just aluminum and then I made my own blades and all kinds of stuff to get this radius in it and it'll plane in areas like this maybe not so much in a really tight area but in an area like this but a lot of the problems with this is like if you get in an area that's too tight this part of the plane starts dragging on your material so you can't get at it so it doesn't work that well you know it works great for backing planks out and that's what I made it for but it doesn't work that great for something like this and uh, I think it's best that you uh, accomplish this with hand tools the next thing you can do when you get into the flatter areas you can just use a number five plane you know in flat areas or a wooden plane like this a transitional plane that's flat on the bottom I've got numbers of different radiuses here I would start out on the other side back aft I always plane from my right to the left because I use my right arm my right arm is trained up for the job believe me and my left arm isn't so I'm going to start out back aft I'm going to use one of these planes to start then I'll get involved with these other planes and um, there's a few things I want to show you right now I've got a wooden plane right here this one's got a flat bottom on it now I'm going to hold it up and put it in this area and uh, look it sits there pretty nice not bad right there like that if I was to twist it a little bit like that now listen it's rocking like that that's not the direction to hold the plane against the hull there's a proper direction to hold the plane against the hull when you're planing in this area it's like this as you get in other areas you know it might change a little bit you know so you can discover as you're planing what position the plane has to be in to do the work but you know as you're planing you kind of discover that automatically but you don't have to push the plane in the direction that the plane is headed you can push the plane skew the plane across the work this way you can skew the plane across the work that way and you can push it directly in line that the plane is headed so numbers of different things you can do with it and uh, then what I do with that afterwards is I'll take a scraper like this is just a red devil scraper and uh, I can show you how to sharpen it I, I, I probably have shown you how to sharpen it before and uh, we use this in like a double diagonal fashion it's sharpened to a little radius as well so the corners won't drag and uh, you know I'll feel an area like this and find maybe a little lumpy spot or something and I can use it like this the final thing double diagonal like this and it really smooths it out nice so quite a few pieces of equipment I'm going to take you over to the other side and show you how it's done. Well, so I started out with this block plane here, wooden block plane, and it's got quite a radius to the bottom. I need quite a radius to get into here. If I had any flatter plane or, or with less radius in it, I wouldn't be able to reach it. So we start out with this, and uh, I can get fairly close to the corner or to the rabbit with it, but 
Now I can't really get up to it, so what I'm gonna do is switch over to this little number 92 rabbit plane and do a little bit of work in this corner before I continue. care of that and uh, to get all the way to the rabbit I'm going to end up using scrapers but now I'm going to switch over to one of my cordless planes here now this one's got as much radius as any one of them right here so I'll be able to continue with this I'll get down maybe a little further down in here and then I'm going to use a different one so let me get started with this Now this is the most difficult area right here because I've got the rabbit that I'm banging the heel of the plane into. It's the tightest radius of all of it so if I can do it in here I can do it anywhere and besides the fact this one piece of wood right here has got a very hard spot in it right here so you have to kind of concentrate on that to make sure that you don't leave that alone but that already feels a nice shape right there. It feels really nice right in there. It's got a little bit of finishing to do yet but now what I'm going to do is move down and take care of some of this area right here. Now, it's kind of like mowing the lawn, you know. You're going to make a stripe, another one right alongside of it, another one right alongside of that. And it's a little tricky because you have to be able to very quickly put, get the plane on the right angle so it sits in there properly. properly. It can't be put up there this way, it can't be put up there this way, it won't cut. It's got to be like this, so that it rocks a little bit from uh, heel to toe, like that. And then the blade will be in contact with the wood and you can cut. The other thing with it is, is that you have to be able to put your arms up there and get some momentum going before you actually land the plane. And it also has to be landed in the right spot. So there's a little bit to uh, think about as you get learning this kind of stuff, but as you become more familiar with it it gets a little bit easier and a little bit easier so you know it's uh it's just something that i actually really enjoy doing this kind of work it's, it's a little bit of a test for somebody like me at my age but uh i'm cut out for it i'm ready for it so you know i'm going to do a little bit more work here show you a little bit more and uh, the only other thing i have to say is this kind of work right here you just don't have too much food in your stomach or uh any kind of acidic food or heavy sugar because as you plane you twist your esophagus quite a bit you end up getting acid indigestion from doing this so <laughs> you kind of have to be careful I'm just standing on a little block of wood right here and I'm going to get back up there do a little bit more I love the sound of the plane when it finally cuts. You know, some strokes don't sound quite as nice as others, but when you make a perfect one, you know, it's like a perfect phone call. You know, it just really sounds great.
now that I've got most of the work done behind me, I can move forward, like I said, like mowing the lawn. You know, I'm going to be working in that direction, stripe after stripe after stripe. I have to, like, coordinate my hands to land in the right spot and all those things I should do. Now, I've almost got to the depth I need to get to, but I think I can go over this area again. And when you see the blue line start to fade out, and you know you've got to the depth that you're going to get to the blue lines, are your depth and longitudinal control. feel it under the plane if it's got lumps and different things in it. It's amazing. Your, your nerves are, are amazing. You can feel right through this plane and feel lumps and different things of whether the plane is chattering or bouncing up and down this way or whatever it is, but you can feel it and once you've gotten it right, then you can pretty much tell yourself that when you touch that, it's going to feel right. And it does. So, I'm going to move up a little bit more. Keep going. Now the block is doing exactly what I don't want it to do and that spin. I don't mind if it rocks or anything, but if it spins, it's sort of difficult. I can feel there's a plank right in there. That one's a little proud for whatever reason. So I'm going to concentrate on that area a little bit and take that one. Uh, we're talking, you know, a 32nd of an inch or a 64th even. It's really nothing at all. But you can hear the plane snapping right over it as it rocks over it. And once the slope is gone, Well, can you imagine doing an entire boat like this? And uh, this is exactly the way it was done many years ago. There would be people that all they did was this, sparing the planes, and, and uh, they accomplished a tremendous amount of work. They must have been some strong guys. because I'm getting out of breath and the other thing it is that you have to do is make sure that you keep breathing while you're working because a lot of people including myself will tend to hold their breath while they're ex exerting themselves and it doesn't work you need oxygen I'm going to get rid of this block working overhead here so Tell you the truth, I'm a little surprised that I can still do it at my age, but not only can I do it, it's enjoyable. So, this is a man enjoying his work, right? Here.
Now I'm going to put this plane down and I'm going to pick up another one that's got less radius. This one's got a lot less radius actually. Let me see if I got the right one. Actually, uh, I don't. It's this one. Here we go. All right, this one's got less radius and I'm moving into an area that's got less curvature to it. So I think this plane will work really nicely up in here. I've got this one adjusted to really, really, really cut a very, very fine cut. So I'm going to adjust it a little tiny bit. Cut a little bit more. into that curvature it really makes it more and more important that you get that plane in the right area especially on the right angle especially because this one's got less curvature so it's less forgiving quite a bit less forgiving you've got to get it on the right angle but like I said you don't have to push it on that angle you can and you can cut but I kind of skew it across like that it makes it easier to move Easy to get to that area I'm having a tough time getting to because it's rounded a little bit more than this plane will be. Now up in this area, it's starting to cut. Well, that's how you go about that, and uh, I'm going to continue doing it, but before I continue with this, I want to take you up forward and show you how we accomplish the smoothing out or the fairing out of some of the flatter areas in the boat with an electric plane. All right, now I'm going to show you how to do these flat areas with an electric plane. Now some of the same things apply that I taught you back after, especially about the direction of the plane on the surface, because if I put this plane down this way, it's rocking. And if I put it down this way, it lays nice and flat. So, you know, there's a proper direction to have the plane. With this particular plane, mostly I push the plane in the direction that the plane is laying. I don't skew the plane across. You can, but it works better if you just push it in the direction you're going. So, you know, I mean, this stuff was all done by hand, mostly with like a number five plane, you know. A number five, obviously you have to push it yourself like you did back aft, but in the flat areas, it does push a little bit harder. It's a little bit harder work, you know, even though it's not a futtock curve or an inside curve like that, planing on the flat areas is a little bit harder to do. So. You know, the electric solves that problem, and uh, you know, I love this little plane, it works great, it comes out nice and smooth, very close to being able to just sand it very slightly if it was a finished surface and it, it'd be paintable just like that. So, let me show you this.
Let me just tell you a few things now. Uh, like I said before, I'm pushing the plane basically in the direction that I'm holding the plane against the wood. I'm taking off a fair amount of material in this first swipe because I'm just trying to get it all the glue off and all that kind of stuff. And then I'll reduce my setting and go over it again. But uh, you can hear it where it cuts and where it doesn't cut. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it really isn't all that loud. It may sound pretty loud in the camera, but it isn't even bothering my ears. So this tool accomplishes the task pretty rapidly and uh, it's pretty much a pleasure to use because, well, for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is it makes chips not really dust. So I don't really need to wear a respirator or anything like that. I mean, I think I would recommend wearing a respirator, but, you know, I don't do it. I'm not doing it here. I need to be able to speak and different things like that. So, you know, it's just the way it is. this work right here is I'm doing this really all visually you know I, I don't even know where I've been I'm not trying to keep track of it like mowing the lawn one stripe alongside the other I'm letting it develop I'm just using my eyes to see how uh, how well it's come out where I have to plane and I can just randomly go back and forth to any spot I want and uh, you know as I go along and I see all the glue lines disappear I know I'm pretty much there and then like I said I'll go over that same area just a little bit more but I'll reduce the plane's depth of cut before I do it so let me go forward just a little bit more and then I'll replane this area right here So it's working out pretty well and it's coming out really, really nice. It's nice and fair. You can feel the fairness of it under the plane because if it had lumps or anything like that, you know, you'd feel it, the plane would be like rocking over the lumps and things like that. You can also feel it and hear it when you do plane a lump because the sound of the plane is quite a bit different. You know, it's louder as it hits lumps, you know, and there's places where it doesn't even touch. But, you know, the idea is to get it to plane consistently, have the same sound and the same appearance every way you're playing. So I'm going to reduce the amount that it cuts actually down to zero and I'm going to start pushing it along but it won't cut until I you know, uh, start to adjust the plane a little bit more. But I'm going to adjust it as I go so it's just barely cutting and go over this area again.
get down a little bit lower here, the boat does have a little bit of a curve to it down in here, and this plane almost becomes useless. Like in this area, I'm having a little trouble. So what I'll do is I'll go back to a hand plane in this area, but this is coming out really nice and smooth. So, you know, I've got a lot more work to do. I'm gonna do a little bit more of it, and then I'm gonna set the plane down and give myself a little break. So i just like to say that uh, these electric planes are really it as far as this type of work goes. I mean, I could literally uh, plane an entire hull like this out in a day with an electric plane like this. I mean, I imagine it would take me months to do it by hand, you know, with one of my cordless uh, <laughs> planes. And, uh, you know, so it comes out really nice. And uh, I think that uh, there's just no other way to go. This is pretty much it. And what I'll do with this now, I'm going to set this down. And I'm going to go and get a scraper, actually, and I would actually double diagonal scrape this area. I'm going to scrape this so I can take some of those little ridges off this electric plane here. You can hear them right there. Going across it. Then I'll split scrape it on a different angle, like this. So you double diagonal scrape it. And this makes any lumps or any textures or anything like that show up right away. And uh, it smooths them right out. You know, if you have a lump or something like that that's a little bit too big, you know, I would scrape it some, feel it, feel it with the back of my hand, which really works nice, like I said. And then if I thought there was a place that needed a little bit more planing or something like that, I would do it. But pretty much, that's the way it's done right there. Now, you can see that I've got the stuff all over me. You know, it just happens to me. I've been wearing this same vest for I don't know how many years. And I think down in these pockets, you could probably find chips from any number of boats I've worked on over the years. You know, some of the 12 meter fleet is in my pockets here. Numbers of different Trumpies all kinds of skiffs, all kinds of stuff. It all ends up here in my pockets.